Well, I've finally gone and done it. So we can do the next part of the microphone preamp video. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. I'm finally going to build that microphone preamp I've been going on about for so long. And the reason this is taking so long is because I haven't got off my lazy behind. And also, some of the stuff I've ordered hasn't arrived yet. Anyway, what I do have is some nice project boxes, which I might use for some future projects, but one of these is going to be used to house the microphone preamp. A nice thing about these boxes is, if I can just get the lid off, it's got a little circuit board inside, which I can put all the components on, and solder them onto the bottom. And they even come with all the fixings, so we've got screws, little feet, everything we can need. And don't look at my messy floor. Also, I've got all the transistors and integrated circuits I'm going to use, plus some spares, just in case I destroy any of them. And as before, we're going to do it on the breadboard first. Now, this circuit here is the circuit from the previous video. Now this is just using standard components. We've got BC547 and 557 transistors, ordinary carbon resistors, and a TL072 op amp. So everything's pretty much run in the mill there. It's just the metal film resistors that I'm waiting for. So when I when those finally arrive, I can actually build this up proper, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to experiment with different transistors and different integrated circuits on the breadboard, see how well they perform. So, anyway, let's have a listen to this circuit as is. Okay, so this is a test of the circuit from the previous video, although you might have noticed I've made one tiny little change to it. And that is this potentiometer here. And that's replaced the two resistors that were in the positive rail of the differential input stage. And I think this way is a much better way of nulling out any hum so I can get the common mode rejection ratio just right. As I'm going to show you now. So, I'm going to move it one way. And you can hear we've got some hum. Now I'm going to move it the other way. And the hum disappears. Now I'm going to move it a bit further. As you can hear, the hum is back. So I can position this just right to nail out any hum that is picked up along the microphone wire. So, we know how good that works. So now I'm going to swap out these common as much BC547s and BC557s for some much better low noise transistors. Alright, so this is a test with the new low noise transistors BC549 and 2N4403. And it's a good thing I looked up the pinouts because although the BC549s have the same pinouts as the BC547s, the 2N4403s were the other way around to the BC557s. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is swap out the TL072 for an OPA2134. A nice thing about this is they have the same pinout, so I'm not going to have to change anything in the circuit. So, let's see how well this works. Alright. So I have now swapped out the TL072 for an OPA2134. And I don't know why I'm talking like this. But anyway, let's hear how this sounds. And now, let's try the NE5534. Okay, so this is with the NE5532. You may have noticed I've had to change the position of a few of the parts. That's because this chip doesn't have the same pinout as the previous two, so I had to move things around a little. 
it would be even less noisy once I get those metal film resistors, which are still yet to come. But for now, this should be a more than conclusive experiment about which one sounds better, so I've got to make up my mind. Okay, so the other stuff has arrived now. So let's take a look at what we've got in here. Don't need to cover anything up because you won't be able to see that address anyway. Make sure there's nothing else left in there. Pink handled scissors, Big Clive would probably use. As you know, he loves his pink stuff. Okay, let's get this open. <clears throat> Look at all these goodies inside. We got diodes. Capacitors. More capacitors. Transistors, I have to have a look at what types are actually in there. LEDs. And of course, my metal film resistors. Let's have a little look at the transistors, see what we've got. Let's open one of these. Don't know what transistors are in here. Probably something like BC547s and 557s, something like that. Let's see, what is this? No. Cannot quite make that out. Have to use a little bit of visual aid here. This is a 2N5551. I'm not exactly familiar with those, but I'm more than certain I'll find use for them. Let's see what's in one of these ones. I think these ones are just a tiny little bit smaller. A733? That's possibly a PNP of some kind. Anyway, they're going in my drawer of transistors. Got some electrolytic capacitors, small ones. Help if I was showing it in the camera. But I can make good use of those. And some ceramic capacitors, again, I can make good use of those. LEDs, I can find some good things to do with them. Some diodes, so I don't no, I can see some 1 in 4148s, but I don't know what the other ones are. So, oh, we got more in there than I thought. It's the most powerful looking diodes, or somewhat powerful looking ones. Regular diodes. Are these 1 in 4148s, as I think they are? Yep. And these other ones, what are these? I don't know, just standard diodes. My camera battery's running out again. 1N407. Yeah, pretty standard diodes, but still pretty useful. And my resistors. Well, know what I'm going to be doing later on today. Okay, I've only got about 8 minutes on my memory card, so I better make this quick. Anyway, before I build up the microphone preamp, Gonna do a little bit more experimenting on the breadboard. And just for reference, this is how it sounds with the ordinary carbon film resistors. So now I'm going to change those to metal film resistors and let's see if it makes any difference. Personally, I don't think we're gonna hear a difference because this already works amazingly well, so we'll just have to see. And now, here we are. I've had to use 47K resistors in the op-amp part of the circuit because I didn't have any 56k ones so the output level is going to be a little bit lower than what it was before but that's not really going to be much of a problem anyway there's one last test I want to do and that is replace this potentiometer here with fixed resistors here we are with the fixed resistors in place of the potentiometer so this way I've got no way to adjust the common mode rejection ratio so I really don't know whether to use this, which might be slightly noisy, but I can get the common road rejection ratio adjusted properly, or to go all out with the 
metal film resistors. Okay, so that went reasonably well. Unfortunately, I didn't know that my power supply had started interfering with the circuit. And I didn't find this out until after I'd shot the video. I mean, it wasn't doing that yesterday, but today, when I did those three tests, it is. But anyway, I'm going to run this off batteries, so that shouldn't be a problem. So what I need to do now is put this onto this. Alright, well, here it is all built. Look at it. I built it. So I've got everything in, apart from the chip, because I'm going to do that later on. First, I just want to make sure that the differential input stage is working, which I've built up, and hopefully it'll work. And not too bad of a job with the soldering, either. So, go over to the scope. Now, I've got my microphone connected up to my little circuit, and you can barely see the picture on the scope. I don't know why this thing looks so dark on the camera. It doesn't look like that in real life. If we adjust the camera's angle, maybe we can see it better. Alright, so, I'm going to turn the power on, and let's see if this thing works or goes up in smoke. Either way, it's going to make an interesting video. Okay, nothing's released the magic smoke. That's good. Let's see if we've got any waveforms. I'm going to pick up the microphone. And testing, testing. One, two, three. Okay, for some reason, the bottom waveform's looking good, but the, we're barely getting any top waveform unless that's just a loose connection on my scope leads. On my scope itself. Okay, yeah. Just got a little bit of a scratchy connection on my scope there. But, we've got opposing waveforms, even though you can barely see it, and that's exactly what we want. Let me just adjust the lighting here, and hopefully you can see what's going on. I'm not going to sing into the microphone to see exactly how good the waveforms are. Instead, I'm going to use a signal generator, an acoustic signal generator. Come on. I don't know why the scope's having a hard time triggering from that. Well, it works. So the next thing to do is put the chip in and see how well that goes. Alrighty then, it is done. And it is working absolutely perfectly. Now I've only got about six minutes on my memory card, so I better make this quick. Anyway, I've got it hooked up to the scope. So when I speak into the microphone, the microphone picks up my voice. The circuit amplifies it. And we can see it on the scope. Now, I say this is working perfectly. It's doing one weird little thing which I don't think is going to be a problem anyway. Now, if I try to measure the inverting input on the op amp, we get some weird oscillation going on. So I'm going to take the scope probe, and I'm going to connect that to the inverting input on the chip, which is right here. I'll connect it to this resistor, which goes there, so... As you can see now, the chip's oscillating. Or at least you would be able to see it if I turn the time base up. So there you go, you can see it's not exactly sure what's causing that. Could be some kind of parasitic feedback with the scope probe. Anyway, let's just put this back to where it was. I think it was about there. So, I'll put this back onto the output. So we should see my voice on the scope again. And even if I connect the other scope probe, which isn't being monitored on the scope screen. So I'll just connect this one to the inverting input. Again. The chip starts to oscillate, but I'm going to have to turn things up a little bit here because it's way off the scope screen now. There we go. 
So, like I said, not exactly sure what's causing that, other than some kind of weird feedback going on somewhere. But I don't think that's going to be a problem because when I disconnect the non inverting input, sorry, when I disconnect the inverting input from the scope, the oscillation stops. And it works as it normally should. So here it is, the finished microphone preamp in a nice little project box. And I gotta say, this restaurant, restaurant? I mean, this worktop is getting a little bit messy now, so I gotta clean things up. But first, it's gonna get a little bit more messy because something else has arrived. A couple of preamplifier chips I was going to do another microphone preamp project with. Thought I'd forgotten to order those. But for some reason, they didn't send those along with the rest of my order, so they arrived today, so uh, yeah. Anyway, that's about it for this video. So, I'll see you again sometime soon. Probably doing another microphone preamp project with these chips. These, um, I've forgotten what they are. SSM2019 or something like that. So until next time, goodbye.